Have you ever come across a TV series that left you puzzled and wanting more? If not, get ready for an exciting journey with The Prisoner. This show from 1967 is full of interesting, surprising, and emotional moments that will keep you hooked. Set in a strange village, The Prisoner tells the story of a former spy trapped in a bizarre world where escaping seems impossible. With its mix of spying, deep emotions, and a strange society, this series offers a unique experience that's both engaging and thought-provoking. Now, here's the big question. Is there a particular scene or moment in The Prisoner that has stayed with you? Whether it's the twist in the story or the interesting characters, there's plenty to think about. Talking about characters, which one do you find the most memorable? From the mysterious number six to the tricky number two, each character adds depth to the story, making it hard to choose a favorite. But enough about the show. What's your favorite memory or personal experience related to The Prisoner? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So keep watching, keep thinking, and keep sharing. The adventure is just beginning. The TV show The Prisoner, which aired in 1967, is often seen as ahead of its time. It has an interesting story that keeps people interested. One important thing is how the plot changes in episodes like The Schizoid Man and Hammer into Anvil. The main character, number six, deals with tricky situations in the village, a mysterious place. Even though it seems simple at first, the show gets deeper over time, showing more about people's minds. It talks about how societies control us and how we fight back. Some might find it confusing at first, but if you stick with it, you'll see it's worth it. Overall, The Prisoner is a big deal for TV storytelling. It explores human nature and society in a way that stays relevant. The Prisoner, a 1967 TV series, holds the rights to an audio clip used in Iron Maiden's song The Prisoner. Permission was granted in a telephone conversation between him and their manager. The theme music, titled The Age of Elegance by Ron Grainer, is disputed in its origins. Some say it predates the prisoner. He reportedly whistled it into a tape recorder transcribed by Grainer onto sheet music, who then arranged and orchestrated it. In the village, the numeral seven never appears, unlike no two and no six. No three, no four, and no five are absent. However, no. Six sees the number seven on a grave marker in episode Hammer into Anvil, reading 73. In the final episode of The Prisoner, the revelation of the village location sparked a fan theory suggesting it was actually situated in the real Port Marion Hotel site all along. This theory proposes a long-term arrangement where retired staff lived with the numbers corresponding to hotel room numbers. Patrick McGuhan, who portrayed number six, firmly opposed any romantic involvement for his character throughout the series. Despite attempts by writers to pair number six with female leads, such as Nadia Gray's character in Chimes of Big Ben and Angela Brown's character in A Change of Mind, McGuhan vetoed these efforts. The closest number six comes to romance is in his friendship with Allison in The Schizoid Man and an observer who falls for him in Dance of the Dead. Filmed in the North Wales resort village of Port Marion over a year, The Prisoner was inspired by McGuhan's earlier work in the village during Danger Man episodes. The Prisoner is a TV series from the late 1960s starring Patrick McGuhan. In the series, he wears a dark brown jacket with piping. Interestingly, two jackets were used during filming, both slightly different from each other. During its premiere run, the show faced production delays. This led to a shortage of episodes, causing confusion among viewers. Some UK TV stations even aired the last episodes of another series, Danger Man, instead. Patrick McGuhan, known for his role in The Prisoner, turned down two significant roles in his career. He rejected offers to play Simon Templer in The Saint and James Bond in Live and Let Die. These roles eventually went to Roger Moore. The prisoner, known for his role as Marin in Doctor Who, was considered for the role of the brain of Morbius. In 1961, he ventured to America for the Broadway production of A Man for All Seasons, but left after two weeks due to New York's intimidating nature. He portrayed Cardinal Wolsey in the stage version, but played a different character in the 1966 film adaptation. Interestingly, the prisoner disclosed his birth date and time, 4.31 a.m., 19th March, 1928, coinciding exactly with Patrick McGuhins, the actor behind his character. The Prisoner, a notable TV series, featured actors Leo McKern and Peter Falk, both with glass eyes. 
McKern appeared in episodes such as The Chimes of Big Ben, Once Upon a Time, and Fall Out, while Falk starred in By Dawn's Early Light, Identity Crisis, Last Salute to the Commodore, Agenda for Murder, Ashes to Ashes, and Murder with Too Many Notes. George Markstein, the bald-headed man seen in the opening credits, served as the script editor and co-creator. Additionally, Markstein showcased his talent as Mr. Jingle in the musical Pickwick, performed at the Savile Theatre in 1963 and on Broadway in 1965. In The Prisoner Rover, the iconic white balloon, originally intended to be a robotic machine, transformed into a surreal sentinel due to an onset mishap. During filming, it was meant to glide over water on hidden rails, but fell into the water, prompting the improvised change. Patrick McGuhan, seizing the moment, envisioned Rover as a free-floating balloon pulled by a wire, which added to its eerie presence. Despite technological advancements, Rover's design has endured as a futuristic and menacing sentinel throughout the series. Only two actors, Leo McKern and Colin Gordon, portrayed number two multiple times, with several others assuming the role once. The recurring presence of these actors added depth to the series' portrayal of authority figures within the village. The creation of the Prisoner series remains a topic of debate among fans. While Patrick McGuhan conceived the concept, George Markstein and director David Tumlin played vital roles in its development. In the series, you can hear actress Fenella Fielding's distinctive voice as one of the village's public address system announcers. Villagers use a hand signal similar to one used by early Christians to represent a fish. The building in Port Marion portrayed as Number Six's house became a gift shop selling prisoner-related merchandise. The Prisoner, a British TV series from 1967, has left its influence on various parts of popular culture. Iron Maiden, a British rock band, paid tribute to the show by releasing two songs, The Prisoner and Back in the Village. In their album Number of the Beast, they even acknowledged how The Prisoner inspired them and thanked Patrick McGuhan for his work on it. Some scenes featuring the distinctive rover involved connecting it to actors via wires. Patrick McGuhan, who starred in The Prisoner, once ran a public speaking school called The Talking Point. Notably, politicians were among the clients of this school. Overall, the show's impact goes beyond television, influencing music, and even public speaking. Its significance continues in popular culture. The Prisoner, a 1967 TV series, features a diminutive, deep-voiced British stage actress who often portrays dominant or villainous roles. She received her education in England and debuted on stage in Lysistrata at the Gate Theatre, London, in 1935. The theme music for The Prisoner involves musicians such as guitarist Vic Flick, known for playing the famous James Bond theme in early Zim 7 movies. The series also involves the son of an Irish-born farmer who, after leaving school at 16, worked in a rope factory and later on a chicken farm. However, due to an allergy to chicken feathers that reactivated childhood asthma, he transitioned to other jobs including as a bank clerk and lorry driver before becoming a stage manager at Sheffield Repertory Theatre.